Hi everybody, today we are going to unbox and install the Inkbird ITC306A temperature controller. The Inkbird controller comes in various versions. The 306 and the 308 both feature dual output power plugs, but what's different is you can get them with either dual heat or separate heat and cooling with either stainless steel or plastic temperature probes. I purchased the 306A, which includes two plastic temperature probes, and they're intended to be fully submersible, and if you haven't figured it out, the A stands for Aquarium. With so many Inkbird controller versions to pick from, you also have the option to select either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity. The 306A is Wi-Fi enabled, but only connects to the 2.4 GHz frequency. I want to point out that while the 306A features dual temperature probes, it does average the temperature between the two and should only be used in a single aquarium. Unlike other Inkbird controllers that feature both heating and cooling control, the 306A features two plugs that allows either a single or dual heater operation. With the unboxing out of the way, now we can install the software. Head over to your favorite application store and download Inkbird Pro. When you first launch the application, you're going to register your name and email address as a login and name the device. In this case, I'm calling it Aquarium. As you launch the application, you're going to find and select the device that you're going to install. At this point, you can plug in the temperature controller and get it ready to connect to your home Wi-Fi. You power on the device and you confirm that the Wi-Fi indicator light is flashing rapidly. At this point, the application is going to ask you to confirm that you are in fact seeing the rapidly blinking LED. Once that's done, you're able to enter your Wi-Fi name and password credentials, as well as to provide the location services. I'm not quite sure why that's required. With that, the application is installed and it now appears in your display. As you launch the application, the current aquarium temperature is predominantly displayed. Down below, T1 is the indicator at which temperature you want the heater to turn on. In this case, it's 79 degrees. T2 is the desired temperature at which you want the aquarium heater to turn off. In this case, it's 80 degrees. Under the settings section, you can make universal changes to your controller. For example, you can change your temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Under temperature calibration, if you have an offset with your thermometer, that's adjusted there. One of the advantages in having a Wi-Fi enabled controller is that it allows you to set high and low temperature values. And if for some reason the temperature in your aquarium exceeds these values, you will be notified through the app as well as an incessant chirping on the controller itself. The continuous heating mode is the maximum allowable time that the heater is allowed to operate. If the desired aquarium temperature isn't met in this time frame, the heater plug shuts down, an audible alarm will sound and a notification will be sent. The controller is now showing that it's in a heating mode. The temperature trend graph keeps a record of the aquarium's temperature in a 24 hour period. You see here the temperature is relatively stable throughout the day. One final thing, the Inkbird app allows you to remotely power on and off your device. I'm not quite sure why I would need to do that, but it's there nevertheless. I should point out that you can set up the device on the controller itself, but it's not user friendly. Stick with the app. You won't regret it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.